This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and this is an urgent update. Has a first step in Revelation's second seal taken place? Does the infamous Wagner Group from Russia have nuclear weapons? The Wagner Group's attempted coup in Russia is more strange and weird than anyone could predict, and it really has me wondering if this group now possesses nuclear weapons weapons. Is that why things are so strange? We know in Revelation's second seal, the rider of the red horse is given a great sword and peace is taken from the people of the earth. That's why we're talking about this today in this urgent update. Now, why is the Wagner Group's coup so strange? Well, they were less than 200 kilometers, you know, about 100 miles from Moscow when the leader, Progrosian, decided to stop its convoy, turn around, and go back. Why? The second unusual thing is why Putin allowed this. Why did he allow Prigozhin and his group to stay alive and, and then move to Belarus? In doing so, Putin seems weak and ineffective. That's not the way he wants to look. You see, Putin is actually doing exactly what Prigozhin wanted, and he's replacing the Russian defense minister. So what reason would there be for Putin to appear to negotiate with a rogue leader who's leading a convoy directly at Putin's capital? Why would Putin allow himself to appear so soft in the eyes of the world? It seems Putin is afraid of the Wagner group. And the only reason I can see for that is they potentially have captured nuclear weapons, or were given nuclear weapons. Who knows? Maybe even by Putin earlier in the war. And this has made Russia, Europe, and the whole world extremely concerned. <laughs> shades of the second seal. Although I don't think it's opened yet, sure has shades of that. Obviously, a man like Putin is unstable. But now, if this is correct, it means a man even more unstable and without ties to any nation might use or worse yet sell any weapons he has. You can see why this would be a problem, a big problem. So let's start at the very beginning of this misadventure. The private military company, the Wagner Group, was established in 2014 to give, quote, possible deniability for anything the Kremlin wanted to do in conflicts abroad. In other words, they could act like a private militia to do Putin's dirty work while not involving the Russian army, and Putin could say, oh, it wasn't me. Over the following decades, you know, this group and its founder grew more and more empowered and well-armed. Last year, after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Putin needed them more than ever. So he released prisoners from his jails if they would fight for this group. These fighters became the Kremlin's most effective shock troops on the battlefield. But just this weekend, the group openly rebelled against the Russian military, claiming the Russians shot missiles at them, and then began to march on the Russian capital to try and overthrow its military leaders, whom Prigozhin has accused of corruption and, of course, as we said, sabotaging his mercenaries. Progrosian's forces then seized military facilities in southwestern Russia. And this is where experts think he may have gotten tactical nuclear weapons as he moved toward Moscow. And almost like a folk hero, Progosian was gaining support of the people. Locals were handing the Wagner mercenaries food and supplies and cheering them on. Naturally, this panicked Moscow. Flights out of the country sold out and thoughts of nationwide revolution were gripping the whole country. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, Progrosian announced they were turning back to avoid, quote, spilling Russian blood, end of quote. Later, the world found out that he'd agreed to a deal put forward by the Belarusian president to stand down and go into exile in Belarus. But why? And why didn't Putin just squash him like a bug? Putin has the air power and ground forces to finish the Wagner Group off. But he didn't. Now, multiple accounts have shared messages claiming that Prigozhin's ultimate goal was not Moscow, but the nuclear storage facility 
near Vorzhnev, a town in central Russia that Wagner seized as part of their march on Moscow. Now, it's acknowledged that the Wagner fighters took control of the military camp, Vrajnev 45, where air tactical nuclear weapons are stored, or at least were stored. The Russian air forces then struck bridges all around that region, which is kind of, you know, further evidence of such a scenario. Leaked Russian military and security messages also indicated the same thing. So, Prigozhin capturing this Vorzhnev 45 nuclear facility near Russia may be what can help explain his decision to suddenly and bizarrely end the coup, which, you know, was succeeding spectacularly. Moscow may never have been his final destination. Vorzhnev 45 may have been. Once he got the nukes, he may have ended the operations because he achieved his objectives. It also explains why Putin didn't bomb the Wagner Group into oblivion. Now, tactical nuclear warheads can be easily loaded onto the type of trucks and light armored vehicles the Wagner Group has. And they can be fired from them also, which is the dangerous part, of course. And they also can be sold on the black market to other paramilitary terrorist type groups like ISIS or even to drug cartels on the USA border they would command a really high price on the black market. And of course, they immediately make the Wagner Group a player on the world scene if they have them. If this is true, they become the first non-nation state to ever have nuclear weapons. And who is to say they weren't given the tactical nukes, of course, by Putin himself, with plans to eventually use them against the Ukrainians. Now, this Prigozhin was a big advocate of the use of tactical and nuclear weapons in order to paralyze the Ukrainians when he was fighting with Russia in that war. He advocated for their use. He's a loose cannon. Now, if the Wagner Group has them, would they use them? Of course they would. They don't have a homeland. They don't seem to have any morals. And nations can't retaliate against any of their families because they're from all over. And Wagner is a mercenary army that is not only operating in Ukraine, it's operating in Africa, it's operating in Syria. And as we said, they have the ability to sell those weapons all over the globe. These particular weapons are not the type of weapon that destroys an entire country. Let's be clear about that. But they're ones that can destroy part of a city, maybe a division of an army. And of course, weapons that spread nuclear fallout as well. And they're very precise weapons with a striking distance of about 100 miles, exactly the distance Progrosian was from Moscow. I find that interesting also. Now, Let's look at the prophetic picture of how this might play out. And to do that, let's examine the second seal of Revelation. I am not saying that this seal is opened yet. But these events might be the first step. We think we're on the road to the last days. And of course, that seal is going to open at some point. This could be part of it. Let's look at it together. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse went out, a fiery red one, and its horseman was empowered or granted or given to take peace from the earth so that people would slaughter one another. And a large sword was given to him. Revelation 6, 3 through 4. So three things happen on the earth at the opening of the seal. Peace is taken away from the earth. Two, People slaughter one another because that peace is taken away. And third, a large sword or weapon of some kind is given to the rider of the horse. Let's look at them individually. Who is the rider of the horse? Well, this is a spiritual horse. It's not a physical horse. So the rider has to be a spiritual being, a principality, fallen angel. So a weapon is given to the principality. A great or megas in the Greek weapon. 
not just some weapon. Now, nuclear weapons in the hands of rogue forces certainly would qualify. Peace is taken from the Earth, yet the Earth isn't at peace now and hasn't really been. There's only like 200 years in the history of the world where there hasn't been a war. So what type of peace is taken away? Peace of mind is taken from people, and they universally fear for their safety something that's never really happened in history. So, let's speculate. Let's say Wagner stole a hundred of these tactical weapons, keeps half and sells half of them to other rogue terrorist armies who begin using them randomly. (laughs) Well, would that qualify as the second seal? Would that be something that takes peace from the earth? It certainly could be. What if Purgosian began to hold cities hostage, saying he has a tactical nuke aimed right at your city and will fire it unless he receives them X million dollars? Would that take peace of mind from the earth? (laughs) You know it would. In all of these cases, this certainly seems to qualify as a potential second seal. It's interesting to look at the word earthquakes in Jesus' Olivet Discourse as well, the beginning of the birth pangs period, the word Jesus uses is seismos, which does mean a great shaking and an earthquake qualifies. But this word is also used in the New Testament for storms, like the storm on the Sea of Galilee. They are also a great shaking, and so is a nuclear explosion. So we shouldn't be too sure that Jesus wasn't speaking of nuclear weapons being used. He might not have been, but he could have been. So I want to give our community a heads-up, biblical opinion of the possibility of this weekend's coup in Russia. I highly recommend you click right here to keep watching and learn how the rest of the beginning of birth pangs issues could take place within the next year or two as well. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.